It's Christ the King Sunday. The reading we have is Christ's crucifixion. It's not really a throne. It's not really the way a king dies. So the question is, what kind of king do we want? Or maybe even to put another spin on it, because this week for me has been about as good as the last week was um, with all of the stuff that's still happening around this wonderful election that we just made it through. And a lot of the commentaries and stuff that I read as I prepared for this sermon actually asked the question. I'm going to ask it of you. Not that I'm going to answer the question. But if Jesus had been on the ballot, would he have been elected? This is an interesting reading we have this morning. Because of all this stuff that's going on and everything that's battling in our lives There's two things in here that really catch my attention. The first one is, as you read through it, right, it says, And as they went to the place that is called the skull or Golgotha, they took Jesus and two criminals with them, and they hung him on the cross and with a criminal one on each side. And then you get these cute little brackets. If you look at the reading, if you look at your the reading there in the in the bulletin or in your Bible, there's brackets. And it says, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing in bracket. What those brackets mean actually means something. It's not just a mistake, right? It wasn't just for fun. Carrie didn't just want to put those in there because she thought that looked good. They're in there for a reason. What that means is this is disputed text. There are people that believe Jesus didn't say this when he was hung on the cross. What do you believe? Actually, scholars have looked at this text over and over again and have, and have gone through the, the research and the, the trying to understand what would have happened. And in the Gospel of Luke, which is very much about forgiveness, Jesus used the word Father when praying to God many, many times. So most scholars believe that this is actually something that Luke wrote in his text. Probably something that actually happened. Jesus actually spoke these words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And Luke wrote it in his text. And the reason that it is now bracketed, because people later, for theological reasons, didn't think that that should be in there. Why? What is Jesus saying? And who is he saying it about? Who? Everyone. Everyone. But who specifically? Let's get a little bit more specific. The criminals? Is it about the criminals? Forgive who? No, not the Jews. The Romans. Maybe the Jews too. But mostly the Romans probably because they're the ones that are actually doing what? Crucifying them at that point in time, right? Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Why would somebody want to take that out? Let's ask that question a little bit different. How many of you, when someone does something bad to you, want to forgive them or get back at them? And remember you're in church. Actually, you're in worship. You can't be in church. Clyde, you were supposed to catch me on that. Right? We don't want to forgive people when they do us wrong. We want to get back at them. We want to get even. We want to give them what they've got coming. You know what actually they've got coming? Forgiveness. 
Because that leads us to the next statement, right? Jesus is hanging there on the cross with two criminals. One who's saying, look, if you really are the Messiah, why are we hanging here? Why can't you take yourself down? Because in actuality, that's the Messiah that all of us want. We don't want a Messiah that's crazy enough to die a death that is so torturous that some people weren't even allowed to be crucified. We want a, we want a Messiah who's going to be like Superman, who carries around a phone booth in his back pocket and is able to change in a heartbeat and save us from everything that we've ever done. Because, because Christ would never die on a cross. Because my Messiah would never be silly enough to go to the cross to die for me. He's going to have superhuman powers and is going to be able to save me and stop this right at the end. Bless you. Because that's not the Messiah we want. And that's what that criminal saw. That criminal said, you're the Messiah. If you really are the Messiah, why are we hanging here? Get yourself down and take us with you. And the other criminal said, do you not fear God? Because he is under the same condemnation that we are. And we are here justly. We are getting what we deserve. He basically said, I'm a criminal and I did something wrong, so I deserve to die. Remember I said just a few seconds ago that some people weren't allowed to die by crucifixion because it was such a torturous death. If you were a Roman citizen, crucifixion was not one of the options that you had for death. Romans would not crucify other Romans because it was such a torturous way to die. They didn't want to subject Roman citizens to it. But this person had to do something bad to be here, hanging next to Jesus. And he says, do you not fear God? Because we're under the same condemnation. We're here justly. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he turns to Jesus and he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what does Jesus reply? It's in your bulletin if you need to look. (laughs) Truly I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Truly I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. What does that mean? Truly, I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. Actually, paradise means garden in the Greek. We take it as meaning heaven. And we take it as meaning that it's today, right? Jesus died on the cross on Friday, and where did he go? We confess, and we'll confess here in just a few minutes, that he died on the cross and he descended into the dead or he descended into hell he didn't go to paradise right away but yet he tells this criminal today you'll be with me in paradise today is a big word in the gospel of luke it happens over and over again today in the city of david is born to you a savior who is christ the lord This scripture has come to pass today in your hearing, Jesus said as he read the scroll of Isaiah in the temple. Come down, for I must go to your house today, Jesus said to Zacchaeus. And truly salvation has come to this house today, Jesus says as he goes and visits Zacchaeus in his house. And then again to the criminal, truly I tell you to Day, you'll be with me in paradise. What if I told you that paradise is not necessarily a place that we will go to, but is a place that we can be all the time because we are with God today? You see, I'm going to go right back to where I went last week. I'm not going to say what I said last week. But 
with all of this stuff that's happening and everybody getting mad at everybody else because things aren't going my way. Well, you know what? Jesus proves to us throughout his life that things aren't going to go our way and he's not going to go with the status quo and make things happen the way that they've always happened. He loved the outcast. He ate with sinners and tax collectors. He went and sought these people out because they were the ones that were rejected by society. And he was trying to restore everybody to one common core, one common good. He's the Messiah that went to the cross and died when none of us expected him to or wanted him to. He's the Messiah that did everything backwards from the way that we expected because that's who he is. And that how is how he lives. He forgave a criminal on the cross who never actually confessed his sins, was probably never baptized, but yet knew in his heart and in his life that Jesus was the Son of God. And because of that, he asked him to remember him. And what did Jesus do? He remembered him. Because Jesus looked past all of the stuff. Remember, this guy did something nasty to get hung on this cross with Jesus. And he looked past all of it. Because that's what God does. Because when you boil it right down to the bottom, each and every one of us is that criminal. So you get to choose today which one you want to be. Do you want to be the criminal that wants Jesus to be Superman? Or do you want to be the criminal that accepts God where he's at and follows after him knowing that the throne for Christ the King is a cross? And that by following him, we're going to do things that nobody in this world would think is rational. But is exactly what God is calling us to. Because we are, it's easy for all of us to love our friends. But God calls us to love our enemies. I'm going to leave us this morning with a quote from a friend of mine. Who is an, a pastor in California. His name is Brian... Stoffergen. There's the very last sentences in his commentary for this past for this week's gospel lesson. Most people can love their friends, and we are to love our enemies, even when the enemy is us.